Welcome everyone to Perspectives on Oral Pathology Tuesdays. We all know that the right diagnosis is the cornerstone of successful patient care. But the ability to make the right diagnosis depends on the collaborative efforts of the diagnostic disciplines. So today we dive deeply into these interactions and how to improve them. I'm Dr. Mandana Donahue, the founder of Oral Pathology 360 and your host for this weekly live stream. Today we have a special guest, Professor Asma Faden, who brings a unique perspective on how oral medicine and pathology can complement each other to achieve better patient outcomes. As a practitioner of both disciplines, Professor Faden will shed light on the importance of interdisciplinary collaboration in dentistry and oral health care. So Professor Faden is Professor of Oral Medicine at the College of Dentistry, King Saud University. She holds a PhD in Oral Medicine from the prestigious Eastman Dental Institute, UCL University of London, and a Master's and a Bachelor's degree from King Saud University, Saudi Arabia. Professor Faden teaches both Oral Medicine and Pathology and is a founding member of the Saudi Board of Oral Medicine and Pathology in Saudi Arabia. You mo- Welcome, Dr. Faden. It is so nice to have you here with us. Hello and good evening, everybody. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, uh, Dr. Mandana, for this uh, uh, opportunity. I was really thrilled when you invited me. Um, uh, I suppose that I'm one of the earliest followers of your uh, 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 link at that time. And it was, uh, it is an honor actually to be part of it. Uh, just to correct uh, one information that uh, my specialty is oral medicine. In this uh, uh, topic, I want to correlate with the oral uh, pathology as well. Thank you so much. Yes, perfect. Okay, and uh, now uh, as we just uh, will be starting to remind everyone who may be attending the first time, you can put in your questions, your thoughts and queries into the chat wherever you are, whether you are on YouTube or you are on LinkedIn, and we will deal with all the questions at the end. Now with that, we shall go on. Uh, Yes, you can. uh, Oops, sorry. Yes, you can start. Okay. Okay. Oral medicine specialist and oral pathology are they BFFs? BFFs. When you invited me uh, to join the uh, the oral pathology three three sixty, the first ca- uh, thing came to my mind: you are an oral pathologist group, and I am an oral medicine. Why, in the first place, I'm following you? Why you have invited me? And the an- answer uh, came to my mind as this title. Do we need each other as an oral medicine specialist and oral pathologist or not? And uh, uh, the, uh, for, this, for example, this slide, it shows that I work in the clinic. I'm the physician. I see the patient and I can work alone and do everything without the help of any specialty. Is that the real thing or not? No, it's not. I still need the pathologist in my practical life. He is he or she are part of my uh, profession, and uh, the aim of this uh, uh, seminar or gathering, I can say, is just to make the communication much better. We have miscommunication and sometimes lack of communication. Why do we need the communication in the first place? Because I'm a diagnostician and the pathologist diagnostician, and the radiologist as well. Diagnosis is a complex, systemic, systematic, and collaborative process. Nobody can deny this. I cannot work alone. Depends on the information gathered by the clinical history and taking uh, uh, the clinical uh, examination. And this is, should be done thoroughly uh, through the physician. But I have to... uh, uh, convert all these informations and the images and the pictures with a good description to the pathologist, seeking his confirmation and approval or denying. Uh, To uh, to determine the cause uh, cause of the disease and uh, the potential prognosis as well. So dialogue, we cannot work as a monologue. It's a dialogue process. Is indispensable approach 
for the correct diagnosis to the benefit of the patient. And it is not only for the benefit of the professionals as well, it's to improve the patient care as well. So, do I have, uh, or uh, the next question is, yeah, okay, the communication will uh, 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 improve uh, the, uh, uh, the patient care. Uh, I have to emphasize for the clinicians now, I'm not going to, the, to uh, describe or discuss cases in this session. No, we are going to talk about how to gain the attention and good communication with the pathologist as a physicians, okay? Patient-centered care is the aim. It's not a tissue center. So I'm not sending only a piece of tissue to the pathologist, asking him for diagnosis. This is, uh, uh, first of all, the oral pathologists, they are not magician. They depend 90% on your information. So we have to rely a good informations with clinical descriptions. So we are taking care of the patient. The patient is our center now, not the tissue. This is number one. Number two is interprofessional mutual trust and respect. We should uh, show our, our respect and trust, and it should be mutually, meaning that sometimes we blame the pathologist, and it happens that he did not read it very well, he mishandled the tissue, and he doesn't know uh, uh, how to confirm my clinical diagnosis. Well, and the other, vice versa, also the pathologist will blame the clinician that uh, mishandling of the tissue and the not enough information. So trust and respect should be mutual between uh, uh, both parties. This will lead to less mistake, less medical, legally, and economic damages. So the next question, how to be a best friend forever with an oral pathologist? And I found out that we, uh, after uh, almost 20 years of experience in the clinic, there is no way to, to deny that uh, one of the best friends for us, for me, specifically is the oral pathologist. And I have to gain his trust and his respect to build this communication, to be his best friend and to gain him as a best friend for me. So I found out that the pathologists, they have few conditions. Maybe as a clinician, we overcome it. We, uh, we treat uh, the, the, the specimen as a piece of tissue and we send it to the, to the pathologist and please deal with it. And this is not the right thing, it depends on the clinician. So the oral pathologist have many conditions to gain his trust and respect. One of them is the pre-biopsy uh, 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 preparation. I have to construct a justification why I'm taking this biopsy. And this should be done by a thorough history and a thorough clinical examination, okay? So I have a justification why I have to take this biopsy for this patient. Also, I have to build up a differential diagnosis list. I cannot just send a piece of tissue uh, without all this information and tell the oral pathologist to deal with it. So pre-biopsy, I have to justify uh, uh, the, the procedure itself. And then I have to build a differential diagnosis list based on my history taking and the clinical examination I have taken. Also, we have to mention a few things. Clinical, this is a not very uh, prominent issue, but it should be considered. Sometimes I have limitations for, the, for taking the uh, biopsy, for example, cases of bleeding, uh, uh, taking anticoagulant, uh, lesions uh, located near the vital structures, and I have to uh, avoid it, or uh, any medical conditions that do not allow for local anesthesia. Now we go to the uh, uh, post-biopsy. I have to fill the form. We will talk about the form and its contents later on. 
and I have to make sure that I give the, the pathologist a good description of the lesions attached with the clinical photo. Uh, when I was a student, there was no uh, clinical photos attached uh, uh, electronically to the file. So uh, we have to take uh, uh, the slide uh, two by two inches and then uh, print it and try to attach it. Sometimes, most of the times it get lost. Now, most of the institutes, they are working on electronic uh, uh, basis. So electronic files. So it is much easier now to take a picture. Don't forget to take a picture from the first visit, second visit, third visit, pre, during, post, whatever. It's a documentation and it's very, very helpful. Uh, uh, I used to take pictures for all my patients with the consent, of course, uh, for educational purposes or uh, for publications. The patient should be informed about this. Then, the pathology form content, patient data, full data, age, sex, uh, 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 occupation, uh, sometimes marital status, very important. I have to fill all the patient data for the pathologist and for the documentation. But I'm talking now about the pathology form itself. Uh, uh, I have to uh, uh, present the patients uh, with, the, uh, with, the, with the demographic data, occupation, also with the clinical details of the lesion. Now I have to concentrate on the lesion. Also, I have to mention any medical uh, history with detailed of any medications been taken. It's highly correlated with the oral manifestation. And this will help a lot the pathologist in confirming our diagnosis. Also, uh, we have to mention uh, the oral habits, all forms of tobacco uh, and alcohol consumption. Tobacco use, sometimes patients, they deny. We have to gain the trust of the patient. This is another trick to gain the trust of the patient to uh, elaborate about the habits, especially uh, uh, it's all over the world, the drugs, tobacco, and alcohol consumption. And it's, uh, it should be done, uh, uh, um, for example, the tobacco, what kind of tobacco, uh, 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 how many times, how many cigarettes, for example, shisha here in Saudi Arabia, in Arab countries. Uh, investigations done, if any, any laboratory investigations have been done should be mentioned. And uh, uh, side, now we have the site and biopsy type uh, and the clinical diagnosis and differential diagnosis. Uh, usually, I don't put uh, the, my definite or the number one diagnosis. I put it in the differential diagnosis list, uh, the number one in the list. And I have to mention any previously biopsy done with the details. If it is not in the same institute, I have to take a picture or scan it and then attach it in the electronic file. Or if it is in the same institute, I have to mention to the oral pathologist. So he or she can go back to the patient's file and review it. It's very important to see the progress of the lesion. Uh, we come now to the surgical biopsy. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I found out, uh, I used to take many biopsies actually uh, from the lip, from the buccal mucosa, from the tongue. And uh, uh, honestly, myself, if it is in the areas that I don't want to approach, like the soft palate or the floor of the mouth, I send them to the uh, oral uh, or maxillofacial or oral surgery. Uh, uh, but I have taken many, many, many biopsies, excisional, incisional, uh, bunch, whatever, but I did not know all these um, instructions I took, uh, I learned some of them out of experience. But when I went back to the literature, I found out that one of the miscommunication or lack of communication between the oral medicine in the clinic and the pathologist is the lack of these instructions. So any new staff or any new graduate should have an idea about all these instructions how to deliver 
uh, how, how to prepare the surgery, uh, uh, the biopsy, and how to deliver it. Um, I found out it's very uh, critical, and we used to ignore it. For example, using the solution that stains the surface, okay? Toledin blue is the most uh, uh, popular thing. Can uh, uh, It causes, it, okay, uh, toledin blue staining can be used to select the most uh, representative protein of the targeted lesion. But the preparation of the area of the biopsy with iodine, tincture, or other color solution is not recommended as it can interfere with tissue processing and staining procedure. Honestly, I didn't know that about that, okay? So I need the, the, uh, the, uh, the output or the input of the oral pathologist. Also, uh, using the fluorescent screening tools like the uh, ID, uh, oral ID uh, pen, can be more efficient in uh, recognizing the altered area and the lesion uh, bound, uh, boundaries uh, clinically. For example, we can see here in this picture, uh, on the left side uh, here, we can see the toledin blue. Uh, we used to take a, a, a toledin blue uh, to mark the areas uh, we need to biopsy, and then we do the biopsy. But I didn't know that it will interfere with the, uh, or the, the oral pathologist uh, processing. And uh, this is very good to know. After, after marking with the toledin blue, we can uh, take a picture, mark the areas, and then take the biopsy later on. This is one of the things that uh, uh, me and other um, uh, my uh, colleagues, we don't know about this uh, uh, information. Uh, patient here, he's using smokeless tobacco, and uh, it was really difficult for me to uh, know the boundaries or the area. So I used the uh, uh, oral uh, pen, immunofluorescence, um, and it was really helpful. So uh, not every institute have, has the ability to buy this pen, but it is much convenient, more convenient me, for me as a clinician to decide about the boundaries of the alterations, uh, altered areas, and decide uh, which area I should biopsy from. Oh, okay. Can I go back? Here, uh, also administration of local anesthesia. Uh, local anesthesia should not be injected into the tissue which is to be removed. We used to do it, as it can cause artificial distortion of the specimen. A peripheral local anesthesia is indicated to avoid the application of excessive pressure to the tissue and the uh, uh, artificial distortion. A needle insertion at the biopsy side can produce bleeding with extravasation, which can mask the normal cell architecture. Also, it can cause connective tissue separation with uh, vacuolization, causing the interpretation difficult for the oral pathologist. Uh, yes, it makes sense, but we used to do it. So from now on, no more. So we will follow the rule of four. Rule of four, as recommended by oral pathologist, is if we have a lesion, uh, a diffused lesion like this, erythroplakia, we can, if we are going to take this area here, okay, so we move away with rule of four, four areas for local anesthesia uh, uh, insertion, not directly here in the le uh, area where we are going to take the biopsy off. This is called rule of four. Uh, also, we have to select the tissue types of biopsy, whether it is bunch or using the scalable or smear or FNA. We have to decide and to write and inform the uh, pathologist. Procedure uh, should be uh, is it incisional or excisional? And it makes a difference. The biopsy should have sufficient depth and enough surrounding margins for adequate clearance. And this is why sometimes the pathologist uh, ask me to retake the biopsy. I'm so keen not to remove the, uh, a lot of tissue in the clinic and uh, 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 try as much as I can to take the biopsy small so I, I can send it to the uh, uh, pathologist. 
this is not in the favor of the patient nor the clinician, clinician himself. So uh, the uh, uh, the uh, s um, the enough uh, depth uh, depends on the uh, differential diagnosis. Enough depth is recommended. The center should be avoided, especially in the t uh, uh, large tumors, as usually they are necrotic. So necrotic tissue in the center of tumor should be avoided. It's not recommended. In case of uh, mucocutaneous lesions like lichen planus, an area of non-erosive lesion should be chosen, not to the ulcers or the eroded area, since a sample of erosive area will often show non-specific inflammatory changes. It doesn't mean anything then. Uh, this is uh, just a, a bunch. This is a picture of the bunch biopsy. This is how to take. Uh, this is the tumor itself or the lesion and how far we can go in an elliptical way. Also, we have uh, 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 in, in, uh, in the uh, mode of the selection of the tissue, for example, physical bullous lesions, the site of biopsy should be adjacent to the bulla, okay, where the epithelium is still intact. Uh, this is we used to do it, uh, uh, but I have seen cases that the biopsy was taken from the site of, of the bulla itself. Uh, it should be uh, 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 near to it, and uh, here this is a new formation, uh, 40, not uh, older than 48 hours. So uh, where the epithelium is still intact, preferably an early region not older than 48 hours. 48 hours, this is a news for me. Uh, DIF biopsy should be arranged with the lab prior to the biopsy visit. A saline or uh, uh, Michel solution should be prepared. Uh, discontinue any steroid drugs by two weeks prior to the biopsy session. If the lesion is extensive or has varying appearances such as erythroplakia or speckled leukoplakia, different samples should be obtained and placed separately in different labeled containers. So uh, uh, some of it we used to do it automatically, others it is a new information and this I think will improve our communication with the oral pathologist. Uh, this is how uh, the, the, the section, uh, is it deep, is it wide, enough to, go, to uh, get the repre representative cell uh, or the epithelium or the uh, biopsy for, to be sent to the uh, pathologist. Uh, size matters uh, of the tissue. In case of an incisional biopsy, the quantity and quality of the tissue of the tissue are important. We have to take a, suffi a sufficient amount of tissue. In case of incisional biopsy, shrinkage which can occur during the fixation will affect the sample. It is also presenting difficulty in the orientation and mishandling will occur in the lab. Also, we have to decide about the depth of the tissue. An adequate depth is an important criteria. It should include the epithelium and a few millimeters of the underlying connective tissue. In order in oral submucous fibrosis, for example, the epithelial layer only will not show any value or any valid information in the ab absence of the connective tissue where uh, it, is, it, it contains the hyalinization, which is uh, 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 diagnostic for the uh, oral submucous fibrosis. For example, in epithelial neoplasia or dysplasia, the accuracy of the local invasion becomes difficult in shallow specimens. All of this makes sense, but while you are doing the, bi the biopsy in the clinic, we don't have all this in our mind, so we have uh, to remind ourselves as the clinicians about this uh, information. An inadequate depth might cause the uh, narrow strip of the mucosa to fold or care on itself during fixation. And this is very crucial. Advisable to spread the specimen on a hard paper, uh, then insert it in the uh, fixative uh, uh, bottle. The biopsy technique itself, the correct handling is crucial and should be started, uh, stated clearly in the form. The crush effect 
due to incorrect use of forceps in handling the tissue may occur either uh, at the surgery or at the pathology table. A dull scissors or blades can make a make a, a, a such a, a crush artifact. This, this crush artifact could be mistaken in some types of tumor cells as small undifferentiated carcinoma. And this is very, very important for me uh, uh, regarding the crush artifact. Lymph nodes as well can be compressible and compressed uh, uh, and damaged. The biopsy should be obtained by means of clean cut. So the scissors or blade should be very, very sharp, taking care during cutting to avoid tearing or compressions. And uh, 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 for example, some oral surgeons, they used to uh, use the tooth. Here we can see it, the tooth uh, tweezers. And this uh, will destroy the uh, biopsy. I prefer to use this one. Or uh, sometimes I handle it uh, with a gauze, piece of gauze, or we can uh, have this uh, non tooth or teeth uh, tweezers. Uh, also, a firm grasping of the tissue with the tooth forceps leaves a puncture holes that can mimic mucosal spits or epidermoid cyst. This is <laughs> very specific for me, and this will confuse the uh, 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 oral pathologist. The incorrect use of forceps produces the formation of pseudo, pseudo micro cyst like. In an excisional biopsy, the cut should slightly exceed the depth of the lesion. An oral bunch biopsy provides specimens which are of adequate size and quality with few artifacts, but uh, uh, it depends on the location, on the size, and the consistency of the lesion, uh, we can go to the bunch biopsy. Uh, for example, uh, floor of the mouth, uh, uh, the pa soft palate, we cannot use it. Uh, if it is uh, large uh, and we need an excisional biopsy, also the consistency, if it is very uh, smooth area, uh, we cannot uh, uh, grasp the tissue, we cannot uh, use the uh, bunch biopsy. In case of electrosurgery or laser, as we know that it causes heat in its action, and uh, this heat can cause alteration in the tissue protein uh, in a form of coagulation, resulting in an amorphous epithelial and connective tissue appearance. Uh, the biopsy also in such a uh, situation, the epithelial cells become fusiform and hypochromatic. A, a fulgration effect, this is new for me, can also be induced by heat, where the epithelial cells appear detached and the nuclei assume to be in a spindle shape, balisidating configuration. A separation of the epithelium from the basement membrane was also observed in the electrosurgery and the laser usage. The resulting effect of a layer of carbonized uh, uh, tissue, a zone of a thermal necrosis and the thermal damage makes the interpretation, the interpretation more dif difficult for the oral pathologist. A wide incisional margin which is far from the clinical uh, boundary is preferred in such cases by using, if we have to use the electrosurgery or the laser, we have to make the incision away from the lesion area. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the artifact can arise from the, uh, this is new for me. The artifacts can arise from the vacuum effect of a surgical suction tip on the tissue specimen. Uh, the artifact is characterized by formation of a large, often pleomorphic and connective tissue vacuoles, which resembles the traumatized adipose tissue. And uh, we are still learning. Uh, now we, we go to the last thing, which is the tissue submission should be free of any contamination. Any foreign body present in the biopsy makes the interpretation difficult. For example, the cotton can resemble the fungal infection.
Cotton fiber seems like fungal hyphae. Cotton also can resemble an isonophilic amyloid like substances. Gingival samples can contain a fragment of a calculus which may make, mimic an actinomycotic infection. So sh care should be also taken from the starch of the surgeon's gloves, which gives an appearance of a small spherical calcification on the histopathology. After obtaining the sample, washing with saline is indicated followed by the immediate fixation. A good fixing uh, agent uh, uh, penetrates uh, rapidly, uh, preventing autolysis and uh, vitrification, and it preserves the cell details. For light microscope studies, uh, we used to uh, you, uh, have, uh, use the 10% formaldehyde with a sol solution in water. For optimum fixation, the amount of the fixing uh, agent should exceed the tissue volume or the size by 20 times. Insufficient formalin leaves the specimen dry and unfixed. When placed in an alternative solution such as water or saline, results in autolysis of the tissue and artificial changes, artificial change resembling that of bimphigus. Lastly, the fixation bottles should be securely closed to be re prevent uh, the evaporation of the vexative. They must be labeled. Freezing of the tissue prior to fixation or uh, during transportation should be avoided as a cytoplasmic concentr concentration, condensation occur after the cell dehydration following the freezing. Making the surgical margins with uh, marking the surgical margins with silk suture will help in orientation of the specimen and to identify the margins. After all this information, can uh, if I uh, uh, um, comply with all these conditions, am I going to be a good friend to the oral pathologist, Dr. Mandana, or not? And the mic is yours now. So, right, uh, take a, I'll take the minute. Oh, dear. Okay, we also lost Dr. Asma. Anyways, she will be back. Okay, we have, while we have the minute, I would like to say that our word puzzles are doing very well. Thank you all. And uh, this time's, uh, uh, right, so this time's the puzzle number 10 is on food Similes and Metaphors by Dr. Nivedita M. Now, remember, you can also submit your puzzle. All you have to do is go to the uh, website on the page where it says contribute on the tab of contribute right at the bottom is submitting a puzzle. Take care that the puzzle is of interest to both oral pathology and oral medicine, which is now our focus because now we also have... Um, now we have gone on from oral pathology to being the oral diagnostics. Although we are not changing the name of the channel, but now we are focusing on oral diagnostics. And to share with you who were the top performers for the last week. Word Puzzle 9, which was all about IARC. There were four people who solved it very soon before the next puzzle came out. Those were Dr. M. Pavitra. Dr. Shruti Murli, Dr. Upma Tomar, and Dr. Yamuna Devi. So you can also have your name among the top performers by solving the next puzzle soon. In fact, the current puzzle is still up because we will be putting up the new puzzle maybe in a couple of days. So you still have time. You can go to the website and solve the puzzles and possibly and of course, you have to also then submit. There's a form there to submit a picture of the solved puzzle to be able to, um, you know, get the top performer place. Right. With that, let us go to the discussion now. 
Oh dear, Professor Avasma is not there still. Okay. We have a question there. Okay, she's back. Right. Yeah, sorry for that. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I was disconnected. Sorry. I hope that you heard my, uh, you have seen my slides, all of my slides. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, we watched good. the whole okay. lecture. You only okay, just okay. got disconnected. Yes. Yeah, yeah, after I finished. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Doctor. And no problem. Perfectly fine. That was a nice presentation. In fact, now we already have a question. It's a question or a comment. Uh, let's see. Dr. Akshay Trimuke. In the era of WHO modification, pathologists upgrade with the nomenclature of lesions. But the radiologists and surgeons use old nomenclature on provisional and differential diagnosis on the case paper. <laughs> yeah, the, so, he's right. We yeah, should he's be asking updated. what is your take on that confusion? Yes. Well, uh, yes, I totally agree with him. We have a conflict with the uh, radiologist, pathologist, and uh, oral medicine. That's why the aim of my speech today is please communicate with each other. Please, we cannot work alone. Uh, for example, some of my colleagues, they are on, this, on the old terminologies like uh, precancerous, okay? And the new uh, nomenclature is potentially uh, malignant. And uh, this confusion needs an update. Sometimes some people, they do not seek update as long as they are doing their job. So by this communication, uh, I, I would update the pathologist about my uh, clinical terminologist and the pathologist as well will update me with the uh, new terminologist that uh, are going with, uh, with the, uh, according to the WHO. Again, the answer of this is lack of communication. So please trust each other and communicate. Yes. Absolutely. I think two minds will always work better than one. So, and if one doesn't know something or is not up to the date or something, you should always be open to have that exchange and update each other. Because frankly, I think knowledge is growing so fast now that it is almost impossible to keep up. So if we can help each other along as to what needs to be updated, it's always the best. Actually, I have my own uh, uh, experience with this. Uh, I had a patient and uh, all the clinical and the history leads me to Crohn's disease. I've seen something like uh, a cobblestone and my mind goes directly to, and as I ask many questions uh, and take, I took the history and took pictures of it. And my mind was directed to GIT and Crohn's. And I took a biopsy, sent it to my colleague uh, my colleague, she said that, okay, Asma, go back to the patient and uh, revise the history again. I said, no, 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 I'm all, almost there just to confirm. Just please, what I need from you as a pathologist, confirm. And this is one of the lack of miscommunication. Uh, uh, pathology, they, they just, uh, they are, uh, as I said, they are not magician. Give them and uh, confirm. She said that I have seen some uh, 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 viral particles. I said, can't be. She said, just make sure. So we have processed the, uh, the, uh, uh, with the special stains, and it was hex disease. It has nothing to do with GID. So the communication with the pathologist is very important. We need their opinion. Sometimes I call my uh, oral pathologist colleague to the clinic, and uh, we discuss the site of the uh, biopsy. And it's not a shame. This is more information for me. For example, all the information I have mentioned, I'll be honest with myself. Maybe 50% of them, I didn't know that what I'm doing in the clinic will affect the pathologist opinion, which will affect the final uh, diagnosis and the prognosis. And the aim of that is the patient-centered, not a tissue not asking the pathologist, please process this issue alone. Uh, I have many, many uh, uh, good oral pathology friends, and I have to mention here also the difference between sending, sending my biopsies to a general pathologist and oral pathologist. It means a lot to me. I worked in a private uh, clinic, and uh, we, have a, uh, we, have, we used to send uh, our uh, specimens to uh, um, a general pathologist. Uh, 
and uh, there was some uh, uh, arguments regarding a clinical and uh, his opinion and I used to take the uh, slides and give it back to my friend who is uh, uh, head and neck pathologist and we have another opinion there is a difference or oh, head and neck pathologist is something different than a general pathologist. And I asked to refer all uh, my biopsies to another institute or another lab, which uh, I'm, I'm sure that they have an oh, head and neck pathologist. This is one of the things that will affect my final decision. Uh, I am the clinician. I'm the one who will rely, uh, relay the, the news, whether it's bad or good news to the patient. And uh, it's my responsibility to take the final decision. But I cannot fa uh, finalize my decision based on uh, 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 wrong or, mis uh, uh, or uh, misinformed uh, uh, general pathologist, for example. So uh, it is a process. We have to take care of it as the clinicians and communicate with the oral pathologist to make sure that he is a head and neck pathologist. So we are on the same page then. Very, very true. It is very true. It, it is actually really, there is no, what I would say, it is truly a collaboration. The end result is we are all looking for the patient's benefit because there is no treatment possible without the appropriate diagnosis. Without the perfect diagnosis, nothing will work. And uh, there are going to be times where we just have to add to each other's knowledge. And it's a two-way thing. It's never just, uh, you know, one way. Definitely. Uh, everyone has but this still, I, Yeah. But I Sorry. still, uh, I, want, I want to blame the oral pathologist. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, some, some, some of it relies on the oral pathologist. If you have all this information that will affect the specimen, please communicate with us. Tell us, please. Absolutely the handling, the preparation, because we are not uh, oral pathologists. We know how to deal with the specimen. But when you receive the recipe, we sh you should give us the recipe, how to receive it. Uh, so this is what I mean about the communication. All oral medicine specialists or juniors, seniors, uh, uh, professors should know all this information. I knew most of it, but not all of it. I didn't know that uh, the the tip of the suction will affect. I didn't know that injection uh, will affect and give false or mimic other serious diseases, which will affect the uh, uh, quality of life of the patient. So uh, I hope that uh, my lecture will be spreaded for both parties, the pathologist, oral pathologist, and oral medicine. Uh, this will... Uh, 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 make our decision in favor of the patient. Uh, the patient will not be distressed for repeating the uh, 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 biopsy again and again, retake, 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 and then we blame the oral pathologist that they didn't know how to deal with the pathology of the specimen. No, this is not the, uh, the fault of the pathology. We gave him something uh, which is not right. So please tell me, what, what exactly do you want? So when I know what exactly you want, I will give it to you. So I will avoid injection. I will avoid the uh, tips. I will avoid the, uh, uh, the uh, freezing, for example, whatever. And I hope that uh, uh, revising all these uh, uh, criteria or the recipes to have uh, good uh, 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 confirmation uh, for the diagnosis will help all of us, not only the oral medicine specialist. Yes, true. So we have, I don't really know what is RCP. Do you know what is RCP? For RCP, no. <laughs> uh, Bill Gatty. Uh, RCP is a good opportunity. No, I have no idea what is RCP. Okay. Please let us know what is RCP now that you put the thought. <laughs> yes, we need it's, to a go. Good, it's a good idea. Yeah, it's a good chance to know what. Maybe it is a good <laughs> is thing. Yes. Uh, we have to know it. Yes. Uh, okay. Dr. Brian says thank you. Dr. Akshay says thank you. Thank you for attending, everybody. Dr. Arafa Muhammad says thanks. 
Okay, I think we have a comment here. Okay, pathological diagnostic term will be different from clinical diagnostic term at times. For instance, leukoplakia or epithelial hyperplasia with mild or moderate dysplasia. So what do you prefer? Yeah, I always emphasize to differentiate between the clinical terms and the histopathological terms. Sometimes uh, one of the junior uh, residents described the lesion that it is uh, uh, um, hyperkeratosis. And I told her hyperkeratosis is a histopathological term. You cannot, this is a cellular level. So uh, you can say uh, a white patch because this describe what you see, not unless you have uh, super eyes to the cellular level. Uh, 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 what he mentioned, uh, Dr. Muhammad Rishal, is very important. It's very critical. I have to give the clinical description and leave the histopathological description to the oral pathologist and not to mix between both of them. Um, epithelial hyperplasia, yes, but the mild or moderate dysplasia is a histopathological term. So I cannot say clinically he has a moderate high, uh, dysplasia. It is absolutely uh, a histopathological term. So we have to differentiate. Yes, and, and that Thank term you. can only be added after you get the, the, the further histopathology. We can, then you can say yeah, we combine. It's a white patch yes. which has been found to be yes. whatever. Yes. Exactly. But uh, as a clinician, I don't give know. this uh, description. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Okay. I think we don't really have any more. So to begin with, let me say we also, we of course had Dr. Nasser with us. We have Dr. Wen from Myanmar. We have, of course, Dr. Akshay, who's been posted the question. We have Dr. Sahana Ashok. And Dr. Navid. Dr. Pushpanjali. And Dr. Nandini. Right. So I shared these to give everybody time in case... You still want to type something, some questions, some thought, you can. And yeah. um, otherwise, it's... Uh, yeah. I, 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 I frankly I, I, think I, I, none I, of us I, is complete without the other. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've tried not to discuss cases and uh, have argue uh, about the cases. I wanted to start from, from the beginning. So to avoid arguing with the pathologist. And to avoid uh, rescinding and retake uh, as, as a clinician. So this is the beginning. And it, I found it very crucial to learn what exactly do you want so you can help me for the diagnosis. Uh, that's why I, uh, I think if everybody, uh, especially the oral pathologist, if they agree on all the uh, points that I have mentioned. Uh, so uh, we have to admit as a clinicians, we don't know it all, but it's very crucial. And uh, inshallah, we will uh, stick to it. <laughs> yes, inshallah. You yeah, see, the thing like is, I feel it's a two-way thing, you know. Uh, in the same way, there are uh, limitations uh, and requirements on the oral medicine and the radiology side that we as oral pathologists don't know. So we mm -hmm. have certain thought, you know, sort of fixed ideas about some things. It's on both sides. And unless we actually get together and discuss, you know, like this, this is my problem today. You know, like we, we have, we have to actually talk whatever we do not agree on or we do not understand. We really need to talk it out. That is the main thing. Okay. You know, I would like to thank you. Please, sorry, please. Yeah, I would like to thank you. Uh, you have opened uh, a, a very nice door for communication uh, by inviting me because uh, I have uh, many uh, of my students and residents now, uh, they are watching and they are following uh, uh, Orbathology 360 because they are, uh, they trust that uh, they should know the updates uh, uh, in the oral pathology. Being in the or in the clinic alone, this is a monologue, and this is not good for anyone. So, uh, as you said, oral pathology, also the oral radiology people, that we are a team, 
uh, we have to work with each other. But we have a lot of problems with the oral pathologists. That's why I was really happy. I was yes, really happy yes, to be invited. Yeah. Uh, and Believe it was really a, a good way opportunity. Thing. <laughs> yeah. Two-way thing, yeah. Yes, we understand. We used to, we used to blame, blame each other. Now there is no blame. Okay, as long yeah. as we know what exactly you want from us and uh, how to deliver it to you, I think that uh, uh, less blame, less, less retake for the biopsy, and uh, 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 this is the benefit of all, all of us. That's why I'm so uh, thrilled when you invited me. So uh, please. Please communicate with us, uh, our pathologist, open the doors, and uh, uh, we are uh, BFFs, hopefully, inshallah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you know, the thing okay. is, actually, in the same way when you think, like you even mentioned the, to begin with, Oral Pathology 360 did come into existence for oral pathology. I mean, to pro it was it had a fixed thing, promote oral pathology. There was no yeah. real thought. It wasn't that we don't want to do anything about oral medicine. It was just basically thinking of ourselves. So it was oral pathology. Yeah. There was yeah. no particular thought about anybody else. But with mm -hmm. time, I realized that basically at the end, oral pathology, why? Oral pathology also is dear to us because we are bothered about patients. Without patient at the end of it, oral pathology would be meaningless. And then when you think about the patient, then you realize that actually we need oral diagnosis, oral medicine, oral radiology. And which is Thank why now, <laughs> now the channel is really focused on, the, I don't know if you have noticed the change in the wording, but when we are yeah. posting things, I put it now as the diagnostic sciences. Of to, yeah, I noticed that. And yes. it was, I was really happy for that. Yeah, I was really yes. happy for that. Uh, uh, upgrading to the YouTube channel, upgrading the uh, uh, the title and the content, it's very promising. And I wish you all the best, uh, inshallah. And I hope that we will continue uh, in this uh, 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 webinars. Uh, and yes. it was really, really, I'm really happy to join you and for inviting thank me so thank much. you so much thank you thank you we have another couple of comments let me just bring those sure. dr salah says thank you for the useful points and humbling reminders that we need each other yes we do <laughs> okay and dr nasser is saying how much emphasis do oral medicine specialists rely on systemic correlation uh, to relay relaying information makes a difference on uh, on how final diagnosis serves patient, design follow up referral, etc. So his question is so with one minute. There's a question after that. Yeah. Okay. Is specific for the practice in the kingdom. Okay. He's asking you about the practice in in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Okay, let me read his comment. How much emphasis do oral medicine specialists rely on systemic correlation? Relaying info makes a difference. Um, I didn't understand this, but let's go on. How final diagnosis serves patient design follow-up referral? Okay, in my okay, I work in the government in the uh, King's University, and I work in the um, private okay clinic. Uh, the system it was oral medicine was purely uh, academic for the last twenty years. Okay. Uh, for uh, 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 academic uh, and teaching, and then uh, nobody was practicing oral medicine outside of the colleges. So the communication between uh, oral medicine, oral pathology, and oral medicine, we are under the same department. It's called uh, uh, Department of Oral Medicine and Diagnostic Science. It's highly correlated, okay? We depend on each other. When I went to the uh, uh, oral, uh, in the private clinic, there, there was nobody with me except me in the clinic. So I have to build up a bridge between uh, me and other uh, oral pathology lab. Uh, systemic correlation, yes, of course. Uh, I cannot work alone. This is, uh, everybody knows me, and uh, I cannot work alone. Now we have a communication with the King Khalid uh, Hospital, which is the uh, uh, university hospital, we can access their files, we can uh, 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 send them for uh, lab works under our names as a consultant. So uh, working alone 
as a uh, as a oral medicine the clinic is not uh, working anymore uh, uh, we have to work with uh, uh, other specialties. Uh, for example, I have patients, uh, or I have a good relationship with dermatologists, rheumatologists, GITs, and recently I have uh, many communications with uh, uh, psychologists because we have uh, 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 patients who are suffering from uh, chronic or uh, terminal ill diseases, and I have uh, diagnosed them myself and ha they have to be taken care uh, under uh, the psychologist uh, clinic. So systemic correlation, yes, we do it, but uh, we have to work on it more and more. We're not oral medicine clinic alone anymore. Uh, uh, reaching to the right diagnosis, as I said, this is the uh, objective of this uh, uh, seminar or webinar. Uh, uh, design a follow-up and referral, yes, at the level of the university and outside the university, I have a good communication, and we should, we should. I have a communication with dermatologists. We share patients uh, with the rheumatologists. We share Sjogren disease uh, syndromes patient as well, uh, and uh, with the GITs for the Crohn's. So... Uh, uh, it's very uh, uh, answering his question. Yes, it is on the uh, on the on the good track in the Saudi Arabia. Yes. So uh, he says it was a beautiful presentation. Grateful Thank for you, that, Doctor Saif. Thank you, Saif. Doctor Saif, Prof. Saif. So we also have Doctor Usmani from Ecuador. Hi. Oh. Yes, uh, it's a global. <laughs> My yes. Mari and Ecuador, yes, welcome. And I'm very happy, really, to share with all this with so, our other colleagues. Mm. Thank you, everybody, and thank you, Dr. Asma, for coming and joining us. This was very nice and uh, almost unbelievable. We just met only on, uh, you know, on <laughs> LinkedIn. <laughs> LinkedIn. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, LinkedIn has been a great contributor to the channel, frankly speaking. It is. So it is. Through, yeah, through through LinkedIn, I reach you, and through you, I reach other people. And it, it, this is a communication. Wonderful. Yes, this yes, is a communication. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. It's, it's, it's a personal effort, but uh, really, uh, thank you for that. You are most welcome. So I also have your little certificate and thank you so much. And thank I you. will send you the PDF later. Okay. Uh, very kind. So much. Thank you. Thank you so yes. much. Thanks for everybody. See you then. See you. Yes. So uh, just to tell everyone what is going to happen next week. So next week we have, you might know that we have been having town halls where I tell you all about the latest things happening and what is going on. So the next time we are going to have a very, very big, important announcement. So if you are someone who is particularly interested in the what we do at the channel and the things that we are doing, please join us. It will be live on all the three uh, destinations that is YouTube, Facebook and LinkedIn, making it very easy for you to attend from wherever you are. It's a big announcement. It matters to me at least. So please make it a point, if possible at all, to attend. It will be very nice. And um, uh, before we go on, if you did like the content today, please hit the like. Remember the way we get, uh, what matters is that if you like the content, if you share it, if you comment on it, if you subscribe to the channel, basically it keeps taking the ranking of that content higher. So it shows up when people search YouTube or search on uh, Chrome, Google, whatever. So finally, when, since the idea is to promote the diagnostic sciences of dentistry, then we need the content to keep so coming up. So please take the moment to hit that Thumbs like. It, it makes a <laughs> lot of, yes, it does make me also feel better. <laughs> yes. Thumbs up, okay. you deserve it. Thank, yes. <laughs> thank you. And let me end by saying thank you to all of you for watching, for being with us. Uh, wonderful to have you as usual. In fact, today was a very big festival in India. There was Holi, and which is the festival of colors. And I know a lot of people were probably still tired and uh, recovering from the day's celebration. Still quite a few joined us. So thank you so much. And uh, have a wonderful festival. Have a wonderful life. And we shall see everybody next week. Let me see what is the last comment there.
Yes. Dr. Arafa also says thanks from Egypt, another country. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Arafa. So, right. Let's say bye and see everybody next week.